Hello fellow Hyruleans, I am your guide, the Hyrule Historian, and welcome back to another episode of the History of Hyrule Let's Play of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Now it has been quite a while since I have last recorded, and I have been currently working on a few projects on my other channel and away from YouTube, so this is kind of why I've been away. But I am ready to dive back into the world of Hyrule and its lore and all the rich culture it has. So, in the last two sessions, I actually talked about a few things. And for this episode, I wish to do a recap episode. Since I have made a few mistakes here and there. And I kind of wish to kind of go over some of them. Some of them are minor, but not big. And... Then we will be going into the third session, which I will be talking about Hyrule Field and Hyrule Castle Town and even Hyrule Castle itself. So there's a lot to go over and there's a lot more go coming after that. So I feel like let's just go ahead and get started. So to start off, I wish to go over a mistake that I'd done in session 2 which was my scaling system. Now I did use Adult Link's height in the lab at Lake Hylia to get his height and that it equaled 5 foot. Then I measured him against a ladder which I believed was 5x is equaled 5 foot. Although because of this I did not take account of the distance between Adult Link and the ladder. So there was a mistake there. And so after updating the scale, I found out that it's four X's that equaled five foot. Now using the ladder and adult Link's height, I went outside of Lake Hylia to a wall that has some darker bricks to it and a ladder. And this actually worked as another measuring system, which then I put adult Link up to the wall and he reached right around where the dark bricks were. So there was a line there that equaled five foot and another line that equaled around three foot four. Now Kid Link reaches over that mark, which originally that would be around the mark I said Kid Link was at. Now walking over to the ladder that was around the corner, there was a small incline, although the both of the lines that equaled five foot and three foot four did match up with the ladder itself. Although, as I've said, Adult Link is five foot, and this would mean that Kid Link was around three foot eight. So you have to keep in mind if Kid Link is around three foot eight, that means all Kokiri are also around three foot eight. And also, any of the images that I showed in the last session, that means they are only off by a few inches than a few feet. So I wish to kind of clear that up that I did make a mistake and I hope this makes up for it. Here are also a few images that kind of shows the proof of what I'm going for and I hope that we can move on from here. So in this part I wish to go over a few extra notes for the theory if the great Deku tree from Ocarina of Time is the forest temple from Twilight Princess. Although to understand what I am going with, you need to know a brief history of the Temple of Time. And the Temple of Time is located in Hyrule Castle Town's market district within Ocarina of Time. And it also holds an altar for the three spiritual stones, the Door of Time, and the Master Sword, which will lead Link into the Sacred Realm, where the Chamber of Sages is, and the Temple of Light. Now, within the era of Skyward Sword, within Faron Woods, we have the Sealed Temple. Now, it is said within the Hyrule Historia that it is thought that Rauru built over the Seal Temple to create the new Temple of Time. And 
It is just west of the giant tree within Faron Woods. Although some people may believe that the giant tree in Faron Woods is the Deku tree in Ocarina of Time, which then would turn into the forest temple within Twilight Princess. Now the downside to this is that in Ocarina of Time, the Temple of Time is located in the market district of Hyrule Castle Town, although it is still west of the Forest Temple within Twilight Princess. And this would also have the gateway to the Sacred Realm, which would lead Link into the Temple of Light, along with the section where you would find the Master Sword. So you may be asking yourself, what does all of this have to do with the Great Deku Tree and the Forest Temple? Simple answer, location. Within Faron Woods, we had the Sealed Temple, while within Twilight Princess, we had the Temple of Time's Ruins with the Temple of Light, where it still held the Master Sword. Now within Faron Woods, we still have a lot of different platforms around and quite a few bottomless pits. Although, within Faron Woods, we also have to remember that Faron, the water dragon, watches over it. And even though it doesn't really show that in Twilight Princess, you still have to keep in mind of the different landmarks and the different symbols that you may see around within the location. And you also have to keep in mind that in both eras, the Temple of Time's ruins is just west of the Forest Temple. Now that we know where the Forest Temple and the Sealed Temple is located, along with the Temple of Time, we have to keep in mind where the other locations are. And especially that comparing it to the Lost Woods, well, the Lost Woods at some point in the timeline is found up north. Although Farron Woods, it's mainly seen south of Hyrule Field south of Lake Hylia, and that pretty much shows within Breath of the Wild as well. Although Farron Woods is only a small location now within the one giant forest, and even though it is still south of Lake Hylia, it still has quite a few ruins scattered throughout the place. Besides that, you also learn in Breath of the Wild that Farron Woods is separated by mountainsides from the different sections of Hyrule. But anyways, here's just an extra clip of Farron Woods through Breath of the Wild. And you also have to keep in mind that Farron Woods is still just a small section of the giant forest south of Lake Hylia.
So the last thing I wish to talk about is Goma. Since in part 6 and 7 I didn't get to talk about her as much. Since going over the theory if the Deku Tree was the Forest Temple in Twilight Princess. And also listening to the last words of the Great Deku Tree. And I do apologize for part 7 since there wasn't much going on. So, normally Goma is the parasitic armored arachnid, or as what we know for Ocarina of Time. And Goma is technically a species since she has larvas, and some people th believe that Goma is more spider-like, which is understandable, but at the same time, she doesn't carry any of the larvas around with her. They are in the larva state, wandering around in the Deku Tree, or they are just hatching within other sections of the Deku Tree. And pretty much this is the same way within Twilight Princess in the Temple of Light, although you have a different type of Goma. And so it's pretty much saying that this Goma from Ocarina of Time is more of the forest species of her. And in the other eras, we have the more evolved states. Or ones that has evolved for being more fireproof, which is in the Wind Waker. The one that's been in the Sacred Realm or in the Temple of Light within Twilight Princess, which also got a hold of the Mirror of Twilight. And of course the original ones from Zelda 1 and the Oracle games, which has more of a crab-like appearance. Although there are the other ones, which such as the one in Skyward Sword, but it's not fully Goma at that point. It's hard to explain without going into much more detail, but I will say that it has more of a scorpion look. And this also goes along with the one that would be in Hyrule Warriors. Although Hyrule Warriors, I can hear you saying that that isn't part of the timeline, it's an, its own separate thing, and you would be right. Although it is still Hyrule, it has the same landmarks, it still has the same species, the races. It is still Hyrule. It's just an altered history. And it's still the same story of the hero, the princess, and the demon king. Although you still see another side to the species and also a different form of Goma, which is the desert version. And it just kind of shows you that there is something to it. But not going into d too much detail with Hyrule Warriors. Although with Goma, you just st still see a lot of different sides to the species. And that the one from Ocarina of Time is more the forest based, which is the parasitic one. And these could be the most poison ones, but also some of the weakest. Since in the other ones, Goma gained more armor and evolved a lot more depending on the timeline you go down. Well guys, that is it for this recap episode. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like or a comment below. And if you wish to see more, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And this has been the Hyrule Historian. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Thanks for watching and later.